Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special election edition of News Now. I'm Roger Colton. Between now and Election Day on April 6th, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing candidates for townwide election. Today, Franklin and I welcome Tara Donner, who is a candidate for the Belmont School Committee. Let's get started. Franklin, you've got the first question. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Donner, um, you are a middle school teacher in Winchester. Um, can, you tell the, can you tell us how important it is to have somebody who actually is in education as a profession on the school, on the school committee? Sure. Uh, I do think that it's a really important perspective to have uh, among the school committee members and a variety of types of educational experience, I think, can be good. Uh, the committee currently has people with policy experience, um, but I think having someone who is used to teaching in a public school setting and has extensive experience doing that um, gives a different perspective in terms of how to support the students on a day-to-day -day basis and how policies that the administration and the school committee might put into place, how that might look from inside the classroom and how that might impact students in a different way than someone who might uh, you know, have a different skill set. Tara, you've been on the, the school committee for uh, a little while now um, and more fully understand the uh, the breadth or the lack of breadth of the uh, authority of the school committee. Mm -hmm. What aspect of being on the school committee do you believe has the biggest constraint that the public probably doesn't understand? I think the actual scope of what the committee is responsible for is something that isn't necessarily well understood. So it's our um, our job and our role to a hire and fire and review the performance of the superintendent solely, that one employee of the school system. Um, it's our job to oversee the budget and it's our job to set policy uh, for the district. And, and those are the three official jobs we really have. We try very hard to serve as a, a connection and a, a link between the community and the school administration to hear concerns from the community and uh, give them the airtime that is due to influence the decisions of the administrators, but it's not actually our job to make most of those decisions. So uh, Ms. Donner, um, you've been, you, you're completing your, uh, your first term uh, on the school committee. Uh, and you've been talking about in your last two answers, you talked about policies. What are some policies that you've championed in your three years? And what are some of the, uh, what are some, uh, what would be new um, policies that you would champion in a, in a second term? Sure. Um, well, one of the things I'm most proud of from my time on the school committee and something I was concerned about when I ran for election the first time was the role that fees play in our budget. And I'm most proud of the fact that we were able to eliminate the full day kindergarten fee. Um, that was, I think, a real low point of our system and how, how we funded it. And it was uh, very unusual throughout the Commonwealth to do that um, at, for a public school. So I'm very proud of that. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that we established the new equity subcommittee of the school committee. There are only uh, a very few uh, subcommittees. There's the policy committee, finance, curriculum and instruction, and uh, now also equity. So uh, that itself isn't a policy, but the role of the equity subcommittee to uh, review policies and make sure that the concerns of how to make a fully anti-racist and equitable school experience for all of the students of the district to really raise that uh, to the school committee level of conversation, uh, I I'm extremely proud of. Um, a policy that is, uh, a smaller policy, but I think still, you know, every policy is important uh, that we're looking, actually, uh, there's a policy meeting at 515 today. <laughs> so um, looking forward, um, members of the community have raised the point that as we go into the next school year, 
the first day of school. What's slated to be the first day of school is uh, a Jewish holiday. And we, over the last few years, the school system and school department has changed the way that holidays have been uh, observed and which holidays, which religious holidays have um, a no school day or something like that to try to uh, equalize the playing field and not elevate one religion over another. Um, but the fact that um, the first day of school of the first year uh, starting in September full in person that we will have had uh, in quite a while for our students, um, you know, it, it, it does not set the right tone for the year to start with some portion of both our faculty and our students missing the day. Um, so that is a policy that uh, thanks to the advocacy of some people in the community that I'm looking forward to uh, changing to make sure that the first day of school is not uh, a religious holiday of any of the list of religious holidays that we consider, which come from the Anti-Defamation League uh, to make sure that it's comprehensive. Kara, as a member of the Belmont School Committee, you're an elected official. So as an elected official, how would you define your job? Is your job to vote what you believe the community uh, most supports, or is your job to consider uh, the community input and then use your own judgment to vote the way that you believe uh, best serves the community, whether or not it, uh, it reflects community opinion? Sure, well, I think it's really important to find a balance. I think that uh, of course, it's our job to listen to people in the community and the concerns of the community. But where it where the challenge comes is making sure that it's not only the loudest voices that are heard, but that we are really representing the full community. And the full community doesn't not every group and every concern has someone who feels comfortable uh, reaching out in the traditional. Uh, ways of communicating in a public open meeting. Some voices are quieter. And, you know, in my role as a teacher for over the last 20 years, uh, a skill that I've really practiced and honed is looking for and listening to not only the loud voices, not only the quieter voices, but looking for the voices that aren't even speaking up. And so I think as an elected official, it's really important to make sure that you're holding the balance of, you uh, doing all of those things and not only responding to the loudest voices. So I think that um, in as a whole that that's part of a balanced perspective of, you know, following one's conscience and doing what you feel is right. But I think for me, what feels right is to make sure that I'm hearing all of the voices and being uh, fair in listening and doing what is the best for all of the stakeholders in our community. Um, the past year has been unbelievable. I mean, no one could have imagined back in January of last year um, uh, that you would be have to run a school system, help run a school system through a, a pandemic. What are, what are some things that you would like to convey to the public about how how truly difficult that was and how everybody on the committee attempted to do the best for, for the children, the students, the educators in the Belmont school system. Sure, well, I think the first most important thing to say is that the last year has been incredibly difficult for everybody and not just in Belmont, all across the world. The, the impact that this pandemic has had on people in all kinds of ways, and most especially on families with kids, especially families with young kids, has just been tremendously difficult. And so uh, while of course I'm aware of a lot of the anger that people in the community have had about uh, you know the pace of reopening and things like that, I, I do feel that the, you know, the feelings of deep frustration are natural. Nothing has gone in this last year the way anybody would have, you know, tried if you were setting out to make a plan. Um, but some of the, the things that I, I wish people in the community better understood is how much both the school department 
and the members of the school committee have been really, really focused on doing what we can see as the absolute best possible for all the groups of students. So, you know, for example, earlier in the fall, uh, when we did some surveying of families, did they want full, full remote, um, full in-person or hybrid at that time? So this is in the fall. Uh, you know, we got about a third each, a third, a third, a third. So what that means is no matter what we do, about two thirds of people felt like it was the wrong choice. And so I think that people have interpreted that as feeling like we weren't listening and weren't responsive, but our job as a school committee is to consider the needs of the whole system, all the different needs within that, and try to make the best choice that is the least harmful overall. And, and I think that people have sometimes lost sight of that and, and felt that we weren't working hard enough to get kids back into school. But um, I think we've been working uh, extremely hard, um, much, much, much more than uh, previously was required to do this job, uh, to try to get back to school in a safe way as soon as possible given all the constraints that we have, um, both budgetary um, with changing regulations coming from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, uh, et cetera. And, and I'm, I'm really pleased that we are going back at all levels full in person before the end of the school year. I think that that is really important for kids to have that chance to reconnect before school lets out for the summer. And I think it's a great, investment in having next September be a much, much smoother uh, year with kids starting out um, more connected and engaged. Tara, one final question. You mentioned what the job of the school committee was uh, just a few moments ago. And I'd like you to think of uh, the job relative of a school committee member relative to the school superintendent. Is it your job? to supervise the school superintendent, to advise him to, or him or her, uh, or to direct what he or she does? So the superintendent has goals. The school system has goals from year to year. And it's our job to make sure that the school, that the superintendent is meeting his goals and to evaluate him on how well he's doing. You know, I say he, because of our current superintendent, how well he's doing in that. Um, I think we give a tremendous amount of input about the direction we want him to move in. But when it comes down to it, the decisions about operating the system on a daily basis, uh, th those, those are the superintendent's choices and those are not the job of the school committee. And I think that it actually, it undermines the functioning of the system to have too much micromanaging on you know, daily operational issues because it just gets, it gets in the way of letting the administrators do the work that they need to do on a daily basis. But in terms of broad scope direction, absolutely, we uh, advise and give input about what, what we'd like to see him do. That's great. Thanks for joining us today, Tara. Thank you so much for having me. You've been watching a special election edition of News Now. Today, we've been speaking with Tara Donner, who is a candidate for the Belmont uh, School Committee. Between now and Election Day, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing candidates for state for townwide office uh, in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.